What's up everybody? Welcome back to another edition of The Dig. Oh, sorry. What's my problem? I don't know. Start over from the top. Cut. Start over. Okay. Ready? Yeah. What's up everybody? Welcome back to another edition of The Dig. Dude, what are, what are you doing? You're a lot shorter in person. What are you doing right yeah, now? Yeah, what exactly are you doing? Oh, you guys are filming. Yes. Actually, sorry. What are you doing though? Like, do you have a minute? What's up everybody? Welcome back to another edition of The Dig, a series dedicated to helping you improve profitability on your farm. Today, apparently we're gonna have Travis Burnett with us. So Travis is a field agronomist covering the northern half of Indiana. I'm Aaron, and this is Colin, and I reckon we should go ahead and dig in, right? Yep. Let's, Let's dig in. in. Plants lacking optimum levels of macro and micronutrients usually fail to produce high yields. Micronutrients are just as important to overall plant nutrition as macronutrients, but micronutrients typically just need a little bit lesser amounts. In season tissue sampling is a very reliable way to get a feel for how that plant is developing throughout the year. But before we get there, let's talk about some things we can do from a fertility standpoint to start the season. That's right. It's important for farmers to get a good start in the spring to ensure their crops have the greatest potential for success from the moment they get planted. As temperatures warm and spring planting begins, starter fertilizers are a great option to consider. Starter fertilizers typically include various macro and micronutrients that are needed to optimize crops. The goal is to apply a concentrated amount of nutrients near the seedling at planting where the young plant can easily reach them to promote development, especially in early season stress. As planting windows are more compressed and as we're planting earlier and earlier, the likelihood of experiencing the cool, wet conditions at or after planting increase drastically. In furrow technologies like starter fertilizers, both macro and micronutrients, seed treatments, fungicides, insecticides, all of these products can help get that seedling off to the best start possible. When determining if a starter fertilizer is right for your operation, there's a few considerations that come into play. These include fertilizer placement, what are the key nutrients you're wanting to provide to your crop, and also the cost of the various products. For starter fertility on corn, the best place to start is with phosphorus. First, phosphorus availability in these cool, wet conditions that we previously mentioned can be limited. This is especially true in no-till acres or those acres that are planted extremely early, and those are the situations where phosphorus fertility and furrow are most likely to pay. Second, available phosphorus is typically found in lower concentrations in soil water, typically between one and three parts per million. Lastly, phosphorus moves into the plant through a process called diffusion. This requires that phosphorus molecule to be within millimeters of that root itself. The plant takes this phosphorus up in the orthophosphorus form, and as a result, the best way to mitigate phosphorus availability early season is to apply an orthophosphorus form of fertility in furrow. Keep in mind, in situations where you have high concentrations of phosphorus, zinc availability can be limited. This is a situation where we could look at adding zinc with our phosphorus fertility in furrow to offset that risk. All right, Colin, if I wanted to try out some starter fertilizer products on my farm, what are some recommendations you have? Pure Grade Diamond provides a three-year multi-location ROI of $12.78 per acre and a yield advantage of 8.2 bushels on corn. Diamond 6246 is a 100% orthophosphate low salt liquid fertilizer. Under stressful conditions such as cold soil temperatures, phosphorus becomes available once the roots are able to take up the nutrients. Zinc can also be applied in the same applications to offset nutrient tie-up that Travis mentioned earlier. For soybeans, First Pass with Microcarb Micronutrient Blend provides a three-year multi-location ROI of $9.19 and a 2.7 bushel advantage on soybeans. First Pass is an in starter fertilizer specifically formulated to maximize soybean yields. But micronutrients should not just be a consideration at planting time. We know that micronutrients like zinc and manganese and boron are important to the growth and development of that crop all throughout the growing season. Plants require large amounts of essential micronutrients to sustain growth. 220 bushel corn crop only requires between a half pound and a pound of both zinc and boron. So a well-timed foliar application can be very meaningful in season. For example, PFR suggests that an application of 10% boron at tassel returns about 2.8 bushels per acre. Matching micronutrient needs in high yielding conditions requires the supply of nutrient sources at rates that meet the crop's needs during key growth stages. 
Boron and zinc have tight windows for uptake, so environmental conditions that impede mineralization during those peak uptake times could limit availability, even in soils with good organic matter and fertility levels. The proven products shown here consistently provide increased yields and return in our PFR testing. When it comes to soybeans, micronutrients like iron, manganese, zinc, copper, boron, and molybdenum are not as frequently applied to fields as macronutrients are. Applications of PFR proven products like the ones shown here have provided consistent yield gains and positive returns on investment over multiple years of testing. When applied at R1, these products provide additional nutrients to the plant for maximum pod fill potential. PFR studies suggest that the time of day of that fuller application is critical. Applying in the morning, so 8 a.m. for example, uh, seems to be a lot more profitable than applying that same product in the afternoon. And really this comes down to what's going on in the leaf itself. So early in the morning when the temperatures are cooler, the stomata and the guard cells that surround the, the stomata or the entry points into that leaf are more open, more receptive to taking that fertilizer. In the heat of the day, in the afternoon, those guard cells and the stomata are closed and it's a lot harder to get those nutrients into the leaf. All right, Colin, so wrap it up for us. I would say that the micros can be just as important as the macros. You hit the nail on the head there, my friend. <clears throat> Anyways, don't forget to like and subscribe, and we will see you again on another episode of The, the Dig. Dig. Travis, you wanna come here and say bye? Thanks for having me, guys. Bye. That was, uh, that was strange. This, that was a little awkward. Yeah. <laughs> I, I look at him.